Hello guys, welcome to another video with Cass on the Visma channel. So last time I showed you guys my new design for 7 segment displays, but now I have updated the designs and I have quite a lot to show. After making a few changes to the original design, I came up with this one. So this version uh, is still 10 tall, but instead of 10 digits, it's going to display 16 digits. So uh, not only 0 to 9, but also 0 to F. And this is useful because uh, sometimes you want to display something in base 16 with a hexadecimal base uh, and uh, also made it into a pop-out uh, display. So it's cool because it has a different look. It literally pops out of the wall, so this is cool. So let me turn this on for you guys. Here, as you can see, we have a lever and if I turn it on, you can see that it's going to display a zero by default. And then, uh, once again, it's powered by signal strength, so there's, it's always going to be displaying a number unless you turn a display on and off. There's a torch here, so the signal can reach all the way through the, the 16 levels in there. Uh, so, for instance, if I hit this one, you can see that the signal strength here is 9, so it's going to be displaying a 9 up here. Uh, and then you can get into the, the letters now. So if this is activated, this is going to be 10, so this is going to be an A, uh, and this is going to be an E, so signal strength level 14, so that's it. So this is your uh, hexadecimal display, this is the total size of this thing, so pretty cool design. The next change was extra challenging to implement because I managed to shave off one entire layer of this thing, so instead of 10 tall, this is 9 tall. Uh, but that's not only that, uh, they, these displays here have this property, so this is a 0 to 9 uh, powered by signal strength as well, but it is it has this V-tile property which basically mirrors uh, this layer and uh, the top layer and the bottom layer, and you guys will understand why this is important soon, so this is how it looks, so very compact guys, and once again powered by signal strength, so this would be a 6, for example, I need to turn it on. This is just to show that you can turn on and off those display, uh, which is something useful. So, so this is a 6, and basically, as I showed you guys before, this, those are very easy to control. You just have to send it the, the correct signal strength level, and let's show a 1 in here, and it's going to display the, the number you want. So this is, these are very easy to control. So the next one is an exact copy, but uh, it also has binary input. So let me show you how this works. Uh, once again, we can turn this on by flicking this lever. You can also have an, an enable line. So here uh, we have the four inputs because since this is going to display only digits from uh, nine, to, from zero to nine or nine to zero, uh, we can input this as a binary number. So for instance, this would be number six because this is the least significant bit and this is the most uh, significant bit. So let's see the result. Here, so there's our six, um, and yeah, you can just click the levers in there. So this would be a nine, for instance, and then you can select whatever number you want by using by just having uh, four lines uh, as input in here, and these will work. Besides the binary input, you can also have signal strength input here directly. So let's set it to maybe seven, and then. Yeah, here you can see your 7, so very easy to control guys, all sorts of inputs, and then uh, this is the layer that I added here in order to do binary conversion. You can do your own uh, way to convert those things, this is just one example. And here's what I mean by the vertical tiling property, so, or the V-tile property. As you can see, the displays uh, that I mentioned before are 9 tall, but you can tile those every 8 blocks instead of 9 because I mirrored, uh, this was very difficult to design by the way, <laughs> but actually I mirrored the top and the bottom, so uh, those blocks can be on top of each other. So the display is going to be a little bit slower because I have to use a bunch of uh, comparators to isolate the signal instead of using signal strength directly, but as a result we can tile those vertically and horizontally in a very tight space uh, without anything interfering with each other. Um, yeah, and once again very easy to control. So I can set this to be a number three, uh, and as you can see, this one is off. I mean, off like this, uh, and this one is also off, but they they have different settings. 
So see, this one is a both line. So this is an interesting property that I added here. Uh, that um, if you if you unpower the circuit, it's going to display nothing. But if you power it above nine uh, or above ten in this case, because signal strength level one is going to be a zero, signal strength level ten is going to be nine in this specific case. Uh, it's also going to turn off, which is really useful uh, when you're trying to actually do uh, real projects with these ones. So those are, uh, once again, very easy to set, which is the main goal of this entire thing. So let's see, this is a two now. By the way, there is an order to this to this tank, to these numbers. You can predict uh, what, what is the next number based on the previous one. So if you guys uh, want to have fun and try to figure this out, be my guest. I also built another copy of the, the fully tileable system in here and I stripped a little bit of the uh, of the decoration so you guys can see the redstone and how slim this thing really is how compact it really is for what it does and the difference is at the back I have binary input in this case so let's check out 7 for instance uh, if, it, if we move back here you can see that 7 is 0 1 1 1 so yeah uh, this is this is how this is set up and you just need to run uh, the redstone lines into these things and then you can control the displays uh, in whatever way we, you want with your <laughs> minecraft computers or redstone computers and such and now it's time for a few application examples so i have four examples for you guys uh, the first one is a counter and it's going to count up and also carry uh, let me explain so uh, the input is officially this or unofficially this note block in here so if i hit it it's going to count up to one and then two and three and four so yeah there you go and if you wanted to, re to reset it at any point just hit this button and it's going to reset uh, back to zero this one does the same thing but it counts down so nine eight seven and so on and if you hit the reset button it's going to reset back to nine and those have the exact uh, almost the exact same redstone uh, but they are nine tall as as are the other ones except these ones are not going to tile ev every eight blocks uh, as you see here uh, you need to tile them vertically every nine blocks unfortunately because i use this space in here to, to put the redstone for the counter and the resetting thing and everything like this also making this tileable means that uh, uh if you tile m many of those di those digits side by side as you see here because they're they're still going to tile perfectly horizontally uh, once you reach the maximum value on one of these, uh, they're going to carry the signal to the next one and update the next one. So they update each other in a way that makes sense to us. So let me show you guys the difference. So this is the counter, it's the same thing on both designs. But what changes is what goes uh, after uh, this block in here. So as we reach this block in here, uh, you can see here that we send the, the, the signal in here let me be more clear <laughs> this is a memory and this is what we keep altering we alter the memory we subtract from it which is why uh, this counts so every time it's going to, to take the output and send the output to be decoded by the display so it's going to basically uh, translate the signal strength into a shape that we recognize as a digit so this is what this is doing uh, when you want the, the counter to decrease this is how you do it but when you want it to increase we're going to do it like this instead of uh, sending the signal to a block as you can see here it sends the signal to this block directly we're going to have a fixed uh, signal strength level here 11 in this case and we're going to subtract from it and as we do it it's going to increase uh, instead of decreasing all right so yeah those do the opposite thing and uh, yeah the functionality is hard-coded but they also carry and this third example is one that will um, both increase and decrease so if I hit this button here it goes from 0 to 1 let's see so let's go to 2 it's a falling edge uh, uh, counter and then 3 and then 4 right and if we hit this button it's going to decrease so it's going to going back to 3 now as you can see here uh, and if I hit this one, it's going to reset to zero. And if I hit this one, it's going to reset to nine. All right, perfect. And then we can keep decreasing. So now it's going to be an eight, I think. Oh, I, I hit the reset button, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, decrease by one, so it's going to be eight now. 
So this is cool as well. If I try to increase to 9, that's okay. But if I try to increase it again, it's not going to do anything because it has a hard limit. So the memory is not going above 9 or below 0. So this is consistent. Uh, but I didn't add a carry system in here. So this is not a up and down counter. I believe it's possible to do because there is room in here to do a lot of the, the signal transmission. So for instance, all I need to do the carry for uh, up and up or down is this are these uh, observers in here but if you're going to do for up and down and reset at the same time you're going to need a bunch of extra <laughs> lines in here so you can either either make this bigger or yeah i don't know you can try this as a challenge for yourself but this one is not going to carry if you uh, tile those side by side like this but in any case you can always basically build your system because those are supposed to just be um, number displays. Uh, what I'm showing here is just uh, an example of what you do. You can, if you go at the back of the displays, you have plenty of room to do whatever redstone you need in order to make those work. You can just do a, your computation somewhere else and send the results to the displays what uh, they are for in the first place. Before showing you the last example, I want to show you one really nice feature about uh, those counters in particular because I worked a lot on this design so that uh, you have to do minimal changes in order to configure these uh, so this is supposed to be easy to use this is the whole goal of making those displays it's not just because they are compact but also easy to use so uh, as I told you guys if I keep increasing this thing it's going to reach 9 in this case and then it's going to reset so see, uh, it went from 9 uh, all the way back to 0. Uh, and this is because of this guy in here, this uh, level 3 uh, container in there. So as you can see here, we have signal strength level 15. And every time I increase the counter, this is going to decrease. So now it's at 12, now it's at uh, 11, and so on. And this is how I decide how to reset it. So let's say I wanted to reset this as we get to 4. So it's going to count 0, 1, 2, 3. Go. <laughs> so when we hit the button again, we want this guy to reset. So we want it to reset at 4, right? So as you can see here, we have a signal strength of level 9. So this is what we want. We want this thing to reset when it gets to level 9 instead of 3. So what I can do is I can destroy this guy in there and then I can have another container uh, with signal strength level 9 now. So this one. Right, so there you go, we have a 9 in there, so if we put it like, if we, uh, if I manage to put this in there, see that it has already reset, so let's test it now, so 1, 2, 3, and as I hit, if I hit it once again, it's going to reset back to 0, see, perfect. <laughs> and here is a final example just to show you guys how easy it is to make projects using those uh, displays, finally. So here we can see what looks like to be a clock and we could turn it on by flicking the lever uh, and well, the clock's not running currently, but you can see that we can turn it on and off. Uh, also, we can set those digits freely. So if I hit the blue button, I can reset this, this digits exclusively. And then here it's going to work as a counter so I can interact it uh, from the front panel. So if I want to set it to a nice two in there, there you go, now it's a 2. So I can do it uh, with any of those digits. Uh, and here I'm also using the property I just showed you guys because uh, if we're talking about hours, minutes, and seconds, uh, we cannot have a 9 and 9 in here. It should be 59 at most. So when it reaches 60, it's going to reset automatically. So if I want to run the clock, I can just put any clock down here. See this blue circuit here is going to be our clock. And then your clock's basically going to start running. So this is pretty cool. You can see that it's going to carry. So now it's going to be a five in here. So 53 seconds. And if we wait five more seconds, we're going to see that it's going to carry to the minutes in a minute <laughs> or in a second. So 26 now. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, and this is all it takes to run this entire thing, guys. Well, maybe I can increase this counter in here. I don't need to stop the clock <laughs> to do this exactly. Uh, we can maybe see if the hour is going to change now. So let's put it Set it to 50. No, oh, I guess I did it. <laughs> so now it's hour 10 and minutes 7 and then I, so I guess I pressed the button uh, once, once too many. <laughs> All right, so let me stop the clock.
in here and just show you guys the red stone behind it. So uh, basically all the, the heavy lifting is done by the displays uh, themselves. Uh, and uh, back here we have this logic. When What this does is it's going to detect uh, when this reaches 12 because, well, uh, it, can, it, can, it can make this be a, a clock that goes all the way to 24, so it's or 23, 59, and 59. And when it reaches 24, it's going to reset automatically, or you can make it into a 12 hour clock, doesn't matter. So all this logic does is it detects when the, the clock reaches 12, and then it tries to send a pulse uh, down here. Uh, this, these torches, they connect directly into the memory. So I can basically, if I, if I, if I give it maximum signal strength uh, to this uh, memory latch thing, it's going to reset the counter. So this is what it, this is doing. So when we reach the maximum number for these, for this combination of digits, uh, we reset it automatically. So this is how we keep the clock consistent. And this is basically the only logic here. <laughs> I just have to copy and paste the displays. I had to set this one and this one to reset at six. So it keeps it the, the minutes and seconds consistent. Uh, then I had one logic to detect the hour 12. Then another optional thing to turn the displays on and off here. And then any clock that you want in order to make this uh, update every second or whatever time you want. And you can make this update uh, with the time of the day in game. So yeah, basically just another application guys. So this guys, well, I don't need to say this was a lot of work. This almost drove me crazy. But finally we have something that is really good looking, really compact, really easy to use. Just have to copy and paste those things. You can make your own schematics or turn those into structure blocks. This map is going to be available to you guys. Uh, for you guys to download. If you find any problems with these designs, you can just post a comment. But in general, I would like to have your support uh, in this video. So if you could leave a like, it would mean a lot to me. Uh, and I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this is going to be useful and fun to play with uh, for you guys. Thank you very, very much for watching and hope to see you guys soon.